Shall I start my class? Can you all hear me clearly? Yes, sir. Okay. So today uh, we are going to uh, talk about uh, palm print verification. And uh, in the last class, uh, in the last few classes, uh, we have talked about fingerprint verification, where we have uh, seen a set of uh, pre-processing operations uh, that can be uh, employed uh, for palm, ping, fingerprint uh, images and uh, after that uh, we go for matching okay so after matching uh, we can take a decision whether a fingerprint uh, uh, of the corresponding person can be accepted by the system or uh, it can be rejected by the system so today uh, uh, we will talk about the palm print verification and uh, palm print verification has been using for more than two decades. So palm print verification is not uh, popular uh, like uh, face uh, identification or fingerprint uh, recognition, but uh, it has uh, some use useful applications uh, uh, in place of uh, such biometric systems where uh, those popular biometric systems uh, uh, do not work, okay. So uh, in the places where uh, other biometric systems uh, cannot be used, uh, we can uh, use palm print verification. Like uh, for the uh, old people who are not able to place their fingerprint uh, on a uh, fingerprint uh, sensor properly, so we can uh, recommend uh, palm print verification or uh, palm print uh, recognition system for uh, such type of subjects okay so for the old people or for the uh, manual workers so at the entry point uh, where the manual workers uh, uh, been uh, um, been registered for attendance uh, so we can use this pump print verification or pump print recognition system for them okay so these are the resources you can use for your study so uh, you can uh, so uh, among these uh, five uh, papers you can uh, you can study the online palm print identification by david jang so uh, this is a very much popular paper which was published in 2002 so you can uh, have uh, this paper for your reference okay so other uh, there are other resources uh, you can use for uh, your study but uh, this is the uh, starting uh, point where uh, the palm print uh, a fully automatic online palm print identification system was developed by David Zhang and team. So now uh, palm patterns uh, can be utilized in many applications. Uh, so we have seen that to correlate palm patterns with medical disorders like genetic uh, disorder down and down syndromes to detect genetic abnormality. Okay, so it is used. It is also used for fortune telling in Chinese culture indication of past and future west on the patterns okay so it is believed that the palm print is unique to individuals they remain unchanged throughout at least a certain period during the adult life of an individual 
so uh, we can utilize the pump print so uh, we can you can utilize the pump patterns uh, for various applications so already we have uh, many such applications uh, that are uh, exist uh, in our uh, society so we can uh, use these applications uh, scientifically to uh, detect uh, many uh, uh, such diseases like genetic disorder down syndromes or uh, many other or many other applications where pump print uh, pump patterns are uh, very much found to be useful now what are the different advantages of pump print recognition system so it is uh, said to be high distinctiveness okay it has high distinctiveness uh, it is high it has high permanence uh, it has high performance that means it gives high performance non intrusiveness okay so we can use the low resolution imaging also uh, that means uh, here uh, we can use the high resolution uh, pump print image and low resolution pump print image but uh, for the for capturing the um, capturing the raw features on palm images we can use the low resolution uh, pump print image but for uh, when we use the high resolution pump print image we can capture the minutia points like uh, fingerprint image ridges okay singular points so these are the uh, these are the features uh, which we can obtain from high resolution uh, imaging but principal lines uh, then creases uh, uh, wrinkles these are the features which we can obtain from resolution roll resolution images okay and it is said to be user friendly uh, low price pump print devices and low setup cost highly stable but uh, uh, in reality we have uh, we have observed that uh, the uh, pump print recognition system is not uh, much stable like uh, fingerprint and uh, iris recognition systems and it is not also popular like uh, face recognition system and fingerprint recognition system uh, due to some changes to be occurred on pump patterns during verification or identification now what are the different features which are available uh, on a palm image if we study a pump print pump print image very carefully then we will see there are principal lines are present okay so principal lines consist of heart line life line and head line so there are uh, there are three regions uh, which uh, which are present uh, on a palm image the first region is called the finger root second region is called the inside region and outside region okay we can have also datum points the datum points are nothing but the end points across the palm and their midpoint okay so what are the other features <clears throat> we can have other features like geometry features so width of the palm length of the palm and area of the palm so these are the called geometry features okay wrinkle features we can have wrinkle features so wrinkle features are lines uh, other than principal lines that means the principal lines are clearly uh, clearly uh, observed on a palm image but other than principal lines we can have other lines like uh, wrinkle these are called the wrinkle features okay wrinkle creases so wrinkle features uh, are thinner and more irregular they are classified as coarse wrinkles and fine wrinkles okay now uh, we can have the delta point features these are the these are defined as the center of delta like region in the palm uh, palm print we can have minutia features similar to the uh, fingerprint types of features so these minutia features are observed only in uh, high resolution palm print images okay but in case of a low resolution pump print image we can see the principal lines we can see the wrinkles we can see creases so these are the features which you can obtain from uh, low resolution images and low resolution images uh, can have uh, 100 or less than 100 uh, dpi dot per inch resolution okay but for high resolution pump print image uh, we should have the dpi more than 400 so that we can obtain the minutia like features from a palm image so here we can see two different uh, images where the principal lines are observed okay so here now uh, the first principal line uh, which is marked by one is called the heart line the second principal line which is marked by two is called the head line and the third principal line which is marked by three is called the life line okay and uh, we can have three different regions region i 
the first region is called the finger root so finger root is uh, finger root is observed or finger root uh, finger root can be uh, seen on the above of the palm image okay so above uh, region of the palm image uh, is known as the finger root region why it is called finger root region because this region uh, this region is connected to the uh, con connected with most of the fingers therefore this is called the finger root region and uh, we can have the inside region in the inside region uh, we can have the lifeline uh, this is one of the principal lines uh, which are found on the palm image and uh, we can have the outside region in the outside region we can see that uh, the heart line uh, is emerged from this region okay and uh, the headline is found to be end at this region so this is called the outside region okay so region 3 is called the outside region we can also have the datum points so here a and b are points called the datum point that means the end of the heart line and the uh, start of the life line so if we join these two points two end points then the, we uh, these two points are called the datum points and uh, we can have a straight line uh, if we join these two end points that means the end point uh, the end point of the heart line in uh, start point of the heart line and uh, the end point of the uh, end point of the life line okay or we can uh, we can say con uh, we can say that uh, that uh, life line is uh, light life line emerges from point a or the finger uh, heart line emerges from finger um, uh, point b okay these two points are called the datum points and here o is the midpoint uh, of the line uh, which is joining these two datum points a and b okay so here o is the uh, midpoint of the uh, straight line which is joining a and b datum points okay Now, if we uh, study the if we study the second uh, palm print image, which is uh, provided uh, on the right hand side, then uh, we can see that uh, there are some geometry features and delta point features uh, of a palm print are available on a palm image. Here, C to D, here C to D is the perpendicular bisector of segment AB, and point A uh, one to five are the delta points. Okay. So one to five are the delta points, and uh, here A and B are the datums. Okay, and uh, here uh, C D, C D is the perpendicular bisector. So perpendicular bisector means the uh, if we join uh, two datum points A and B by a straight line, then the midpoint through midpoint uh, one uh, straight line uh, will be passing through. Uh, which is perpendicular to this uh, uh, the straight line which is joining two data points a and b okay so this is called the perpendicular bisector of segment a b okay now uh, if we see a real uh, palm print image then uh, the palm print uh, on on that palm print image uh, we can see uh the palm print features like principal lines so here you can see the principal lines which are clearly observed on a uh, palm image okay we can see the wrinkles so wrinkles uh wrinkles and ridges are the lines other than the principal lines so principal lines are clearly observed uh, on a palm image but wrinkles and ridges uh, if you need if you need to if you need to see these lines, then uh, we need uh, a high resolution image. But wrinkles are the, wrinkles may be the thick line, wrinkles may be the uh, thinner line. Okay, so we can have the coarse, uh, we can have the coarse wrinkles, we can have the fine wrinkles. So wrinkles can have the uh, different, uh, different groups. So we can have the different types of wrinkles, so we can have the ridges. So ridges are not uh, visible on a low resolution image but uh, often we use the low resolution image uh, for uh, pump print verification or identification if we need to integrate uh, the features which are available on a high resolution image then we can integrate these features uh, with the features uh, obtained uh, from a low low resolution image okay then uh, we can make a robust palm print verification system or identification systems. If we integrate two different types of features, which are obtained from 
high resolution image and low resolution image then uh, this palm print uh, verification system can be deployed for various applications so here you can see the types of features uh, on a on uh, different palm print images and uh, you can also observe the pixel density and direction location of lines so uh, we can have the different types of palm print images if we study the palm print images then the direction of this uh, principal lines and the wrinkles ridges are found to be uh, very much different and sometimes sometimes uh, different persons have the same types of uh, principal lines okay and due to that uh, we can uh, we can see the increase of uh, uh, false accept rate okay so if we have similar types of uh, principal lines for a number of persons for a number of subjects then uh, there is a possibility of increasing the false acceptance rate okay so false in that case the false acceptance rate will be increased now we can divide the palm print acquisition systems into two different uh, groups so one is called the offline palm print uh, acquisition system and online palm print acquisition system okay in offline palm print acquisition systems uh, we have uh, already uh, we have already uh, uh, recorded uh, the uh, palm print image uh, using two different uh, using two different uh, acquisition systems so in one acquisition system we can use the ink palm, ink palm images that means the ink uh, is spread over the uh, palm then we place the, that palm on a scanner digital scanner and digital scanner then Uh, take the photograph of that uh, of that ink palm image okay uh, uh, in uh, 100 uh, dpi with 100 dpi or 200 dpi uh, so 100 dpi and 200 dpi is considered to be a low resolution image okay so basically when we consider the op uh, offline mode of palm print acquisition system in offline uh, offline palm print acquisition system uh, employs low resolution Uh, low resolution with 100 or 200 dpi okay so uh, initially what we do initially we uh, we uh, spread the ink on a palm image then we place that palm image on a digital scanner and that digital scanner capture uh, a palm image uh, in low resolution okay and uh, then we crop the area area of interest uh, from the uh, from the palm image and then this is called the region of interest okay now online mode of uh, online mode of palm print acquisition systems we can uh, we can process the palm image uh, re in real time that means uh, during acquisition during acquisition of palm image we can place our uh, palm image in front of a camera or in front of uh, or uh, on a uh, digital scanner then uh, in real time that palm print uh, will be captured and immediately uh, the processing will start okay processing means the pre processing of the fingerprint then uh, then uh, that uh, palm print will go for the uh, feature extraction and finally uh, finally within a fraction of second or within a second or within 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 a few seconds the decision uh, decision will be generated okay so this is called the Uh, online palm print system so uh, uh, depending upon the palm print acquisition system uh, we can have two different systems online palm print and offline palm print in online palm print palm print image is processed in real time in offline palm print palm print images are already been captured okay so it has been recorded uh, uh, it, it has been recorded uh, earlier then the, we use that palm print image uh, for uh, Uh, offline uh, palm print uh, recognition or offline palm print verification now this is a typical uh, block diagram of the palm print uh, recognition systems so like uh, same number of uh, same number of sub systems uh, that are found in a palm print verification system or identification system so in the first uh, step uh, we can have the image acquisition system 
uh, through image acquisition systems we can have either offline uh, palm print image or online palm print image for processing uh, further for feature extraction and pre-processing then uh, we can have the then we can extract the palm, in, palm print image that means here we are interested to extract the region of interest that means region from that region of interest uh, we will extract the features okay so after extracting the region of interest we enhance the image enhance the image means we make the palm print image very clear and noise free okay after that uh, we go for feature extraction so in feature extraction we extract the uh, distinctive features or uh, invariant features those are useful for uh, matching or enrollment so <coughs> we can use this set of features either for enrollment or verification or identification that means uh, initially when there is no palm image uh, in the palm database then we can use uh, that palm image for enrollment purpose so once the enrollment process is done then uh, we can uh, go for verification or identification that means uh, repeatedly when the same subject is appeared again and again uh, uh, with uh, with some biometric systems then previously that person's uh, that person's uh, may contributed the pump print uh, evidence for enrollment okay now when that person repeatedly uh, appearing in from in front of that system then uh, that system again verify or identify that person okay so uh, feature extraction uh, feature extraction is an uh, important uh, part of uh, this uh, palm print verification system because unless and until uh, we have distinctive features and invariant features or some uh, local uh, descriptor type of features so palm print verification system cannot be used for cannot reliably used for identification or verification okay so uh, we uh, we need to have uh, some strong feature extraction techniques uh, for enrollment and uh, as well as for verification or identification then during verification or identification we basically compare the feature vectors which uh, uh, compare the feature vectors which are obtained uh, from the template reference template and query template okay so after comparing a decision is generated based on the decision we can say that whether the person can be uh, accepted by the system or rejected by the system okay or uh, we can successfully identify that person uh, for some uh, for the further uh, uh, further uh, making him the entry at some point okay now uh, when you talk about the pump print pre processing or pump print uh, enhancement uh, image enhancement then the, we need to have the roi detection okay so ROI detection is very important part of palm print uh, verification system without, without ROI detection. So we, uh, we cannot uh, process the palm image. If we go for the whole palm image, that means whatever the palm portion is captured by digital uh, scanner, then uh, that palm print image cannot be used for the verification or identification that will give us uh, more number of uh, false reject rate and true accept rate. Uh, true reject rate okay so therefore so false reject rate and uh, to to minimize the false reject rate and uh, false accept rate we need to determine the region of interest meaningful region of interest so meaningful region of interest uh, means we will see all the principal lines which can be observed on that region of interest and uh, we can also see the ridges uh, ridges then uh, then wrinkles creases all are found uh, on that uh, region of interest area okay so uh, there are the, there are a few steps uh, which can be followed to extract the central part of the pump print images as region of interest okay now in the step one what we do in the step one we apply the gaussian smoothing filter to enhance the image so first we apply the gaussian smoothing filter see this gaussian smoothing filter is a low pass filter uh, what we know about low pass filter is that low pass filter basically attenuates the high frequency signals okay and uh, passes the low frequency signals so therefore uh, gaussian filter uh, gaussian smoothing filter is used as the low filter to remove the noises okay so 
if we want to remove the noises on a palm image then the, we should use the gaussian smoothing filter that is this is the low pass filter which enhance the image by removing the noises on a uh, palm image okay so after smoothing the image uh, we convert the palm image to a binary image to obtain a binary image we can use a predefined threshold based on the threshold we can divide uh, we can divide the grayscale values into two different grayscale values uh, one is black another is white okay so based on that predefined threshold uh, we can obtain the binary image in the second step we apply boundary tracking algorithm why we need to apply the boundary tracking algorithm by applying boundary tracking algorithm we can obtain the boundary of the gaps between the fingers okay so basically uh, after having the binary image uh, we apply the boundary tracking algorithm to obtain the boundaries of the gaps between fingers we know that uh, we have five different fingers uh, on a palm image one is called the thumb uh, thumb uh, then uh, index finger then we have uh, middle finger then we have ring finger and finally we have the uh, little finger okay now gaps are very much important uh, from which uh, we uh, we obtain uh, we obtain some points okay and by joining these points uh, we can uh, first obtain the y axis then uh, middle of that uh, middle of that uh, straight line segment is used to obtain uh, another axis that is called the x axis and using y axis and x axis uh, we obtain the small uh, region of interest on a palm image okay so how uh, this is uh, done so when we apply the boundary tracking algorithm we obtain the boundaries of the gaps between the fingers that means the gaps between the little finger and ring finger okay and gaps between index finger and middle finger so uh, gap and gap between the middle finger and ring finger is not important so therefore we uh, we don't need to uh, obtain the gap between uh, the ring finger and the middle finger because uh, when we obtain the two uh, when we obtain the two uh, two gaps between the index finger and the middle finger and uh, ring finger and the uh, ring finger and little finger then uh, here you can uh, see the image okay so here you can see the image and first we obtain the enhanced image then uh, in figure b we obtain the binary image and uh, in figure c we obtain uh, we obtain the uh, gaps between the little finger and the uh, ring finger and the middle finger and index finger okay so here f1 here uh, f1 xj and uh, f1 yj f2 xj and f2 yj these are the two gaps okay so i may be i may be uh, so here uh, i equals to here j equals to uh, 1 comma 2 that means uh, here uh, we can have uh, two different gaps so in these two different gaps we can have a number of uh, points okay so one such point uh, is obtained from uh, the first gap between uh, ring finger and uh, small finger and another point which is obtained on another gap uh, that is been obtained between the middle finger and the mm, and the index finger okay so now uh, this uh, these two points are joining to get a tangent that means uh, if we consider a equation of line y equals to mx plus c and if these two points satisfy this uh, satisfy the inequality inequality means uh, the inequality that is obtained uh, by uh, if I, if we if we uh, if we consider uh, the line y equals to mx plus c and if these two points that is x1 y1 and x2 y2 these two points are obtained on these two gaps okay now we are joining these two points after joining these two points we obtain a straight line and uh, we take the middle of that uh, middle of this line segment as the uh, as the midpoint that means uh, we obtain uh, the origin of this y axis so this tangent is basically satisfying the equation line equation y equals to mx plus c so this can be proved by the inequality okay so if the inequality inequality is satisfied by uh, x1 y1 and x2 y2 then uh, we can have a tangent small line segment and 
we obtain the midpoint of this line segment uh, as origin okay and this line is uh, this straight line joining x1 y1 x2 y2 on uh, these two gaps are basically uh, y axis okay so we treat this line as the y axis and the midpoint uh, of this line uh, which is if we if we obtain the midpoint this midpoint is called the origin and through this origin if we obtain another straight line which is found to be perpendicular on this line segment then uh, we can say this line uh, we can represent this line as uh, x axis okay now using this uh, y axis and x axis uh, we can obtain a small uh, small part on the palm image this is called the region of interest okay so region of interest uh, can, uh, can be used these two points that is x1 y1 and x2 y2 this x1 y1 and x2 y2 are be, uh, basically uh, used to obtain two another points which decides the which decide the area of that uh, region of interest okay that means uh, corresponding to our, if we if we uh, find a straight line which is going through the uh, first point x1 y1 and another line uh, which is going through uh, x2 y2 then we can uh, decide the area uh, area about the region of interest okay that means a small part is found on a palm image using x axis and y axis and two different points which are obtained on uh, on two different gaps between uh, between small finger uh, small finger and ring finger and uh, middle finger and index finger okay and uh, then we crop this uh, region of interest so after cropping we can have this final image that is uh, figure in figure a we can see the region of interest which is obtained after uh, applying after uh, applying the uh, after applying uh, the tracking algorithm uh, gap so which uh, uses to track the gaps between the fingers and use these uh, gaps to obtain a tangent first then we obtain a perpendicular line which is going through the midpoint of this line segment and using this y axis and x axis and the origin we can obtain a region of interest on a palm image and finally we crop that region as a, uh, a small part of palm image and uh, you can see here that this small region of uh, small region of uh, palm image is containing the principal lines all the all three principal lines and creases, wrinkles, and even uh, you can uh, see the small number of uh, ridges. Now, after pre-processing and uh, or obtaining the region of interest, we need to have a set of features. Okay. Now, uh, a palm print can be represented by some line features from low resolution image. Okay. So in the low resolution image, if we study the low resolution image, we can only see the principal lines. Okay. Now sometimes principal lines are not very are not sufficient to represent the uniqueness of each individual's uh, palm print. Okay. So therefore, we need to have some uh, we need to have some auxiliary features, auxiliary and distinctive features, which can be added to the principal line features, or uh, we can uh, add. Uh, some wrinkle features or creases features to principal lines to make a strong feature set okay now uh, uh, there is a, there is an algorithm uh, which is called uh, the stack filter this stack filter algorithm can be used to extract the principal lines okay and uh, since uh, the principal lines are not the sufficient uh, to represent the uniqueness of uh, individual Pump print, uh, pump print. Uh, therefore, uh, we need to have, uh, we need to study the texture features on a palm image because texture features are found to be very much useful in case of low resolution palm print images. Okay, so therefore, uh, generally we use the low resolution palm print image for identification or verification. So therefore, if we study the texture features and we extract the texture features. Uh, from low resolution pump print image then we can either we can uh, we can uh, we can mix these texture features with uh, the principal lines or uh, the wrinkles creases or we can uh, 
go along with the texture features. That means the texture features are sufficient, uh, sufficient uh, for pump and verification or identification uh, with low resolution pump images. Okay. Now, to extract the uh, texture features, we can use that uh, two-dimensional uh, Gabor filter. This two-dimensional uh, Gabor filter is also uh, used in case of fingerprint verification or identification. Okay. Now, uh, here you can see, in this slide, you can see the first uh, nine images on the left-hand side and, and the uh, next, nine, uh, next set of nine images on the right-hand side. Okay. So uh, on the left hand side, uh, these nine images are obtained from nine different persons, okay, or nine different subjects. They are found to be very similar. That means their principal lines are found to be very similar. So in this case, the false acceptance rate will be increased. If we process this, if we process these uh, fingerprint images for verification or identification, as well as for the enrollment, then after enrollment, if we go with the same uh, go with the go with the images of the same persons for verification and identification then for verification the false accepted rate will be increased with these uh, images okay and uh, on the right hand side we can see uh, uh, another set of nine images uh, uh, another set of uh, nine images which does not have uh, the clear wrinkles features okay that means the wrinkle features are not clearly seen therefore therefore it has been said that only principal lines are not uh, principal lines are not uh, sufficient for verification or identification so we need to have some other type of features like the texture features that can be uh, that can be useful for verification or identification so here uh, we will go for the texture feature and texture feature can be extracted from two dimensional Gabor filter. Okay. Now, in this case, we use the circular Gabor filter, uh, circular Gabor filter as a, as a feature extraction tool. And uh, that, has the, that has the form uh, where we can see that X, uh, we can see the five different parameters are used with uh, this Gabor filter function. Okay. One is the X. Uh, Another is y, theta, u, and sigma. So here x is the uh, so x y is the x coordinate or y coordinate uh, of the uh, image point, and theta is the theta is the orientation, and here u is the frequency, u represent frequency, and sigma the standard deviation. Okay, so this function is called the circular Gabor filter function. So this function given in the continuous form. If we uh, if we use this uh, function uh, for uh, for uh, for extracting the texture feature, then the, this uh, circular Gabor filter is not uh, is not robust uh, against brightness. Okay, to make it more robust against brightness, uh, we can use the discrete Gabor filter, so which can be represented by the second equation. Here you can see that uh, first we obtain the circular Gabor filter, then the, we subtract uh, we subtract the another uh, another uh, component okay uh, from this uh, circular gabor filter and then we obtain a discrete gabor filter so discrete gabor filter is turned to zero dc uh, component with the application of the following uh, function or following formula okay so here uh, g dash is represented by uh, five different parameters s comma y comma theta comma u comma sigma okay then we use the circular Gabor filter and some component in terms of uh, in terms of that uh, in terms of the Gabor filter uh, we can uh, subtract uh, that component uh, from the original circular Gabor filter value and uh, this gives us a set of uh, two dimensional features okay so here 2n plus 1 is the 2n plus 1 uh, so whole square so this gives us the number of filters and this gives us the number of gabor filters okay so uh, in case of uh, in case of the in case of uh, so we, from this functions we can obtain the real uh, real set of features and imaginary set of features now for uh, in case of imaginary set of features uh, we can obtain the dc component is zero 
that means the zero dc component because of the odd symmetry so therefore the, uh, the therefore uh, therefore the imaginary part uh, uh, will have the zero dc component and uh, in the in case of this uh, function discrete gabor filter function we can have two different sets of features uh, in terms of the real part and imaginary part okay now uh, if we uh, if we process uh, this gabor filter for a uh, pump print image then we can see here we have three different uh, pump images uh, in figure a in figure b we have the real part of the corresponding pump images so here you can see that uh, the corresponding uh, corresponding uh, palm images uh, are being represented by the uh, real part and imaginary part we can obtain also the imaginary part in figure c of the corresponding palm images if we uh, look at the first uh, uh, figure that is figure a in figure a the first and the last images uh, is containing some non palm print part okay non palm print region that is the part of background this non palm print part is the part of background okay now sometimes uh, when we uh, when we obtain the region of interest the region of interest may contain the non palm print part since this non palm print is nothing but the part of the background okay now this part of uh, we need to remove this part of background so uh, to remove this uh, non palm print part uh, we can use a mask this mask is generated okay so uh, during matching we can uh, during matching we can uh, uh, we can uh, obtain we can obtain this uh, mask and this mask when this mask is generated this mask is uh, used in terms of the query pump print image okay so over the query pump print image uh, we use this mask and this mask basically uh generate a new features uh, new similar type of features which are found in the neighborhood of the non palm print area okay so neighborhood of the non palm print area uh, is the part of palm print area so therefore so those part of palm print area are used to obtain the pixel new pixels on the non part of the palm print image that is uh, for the background area okay or background part of the background part of the uh, pump print image so for uh, those regions uh, those regions we can uh, generate a mask and using that mask we can remove uh, that non pump print area from the pump print image now after extracting the texture features uh, we can go for matching so during matchings uh, we will have two data sets and a matching algorithm uh, which will determine the degree of similarity between them now if we use the if you use a particular type of features like the texture features then for the texture uh, feature sets we can use the hamming distance for matching okay now to uh, now to describe this matching process clearly we can use the feature vector which represent the image data that consists of two feature matrices one is for real another is for imaginary okay so for uh, real part uh, we will have a two dimensional uh, feature vector and for imaginary part also we can have a two dimensional uh, feature vector that is a matrix okay now a normalized hamming distance is uh, used to determine the similarity measurement for pump print uh, matching okay so here uh, uh, let us consider here p and q p2 pump uh, pump print feature vectors okay so uh, so p is obtained during enrollment and q is obtained uh, during verification or identification and here p and q is uh, p and q are the feature vectors two uh, two feature vectors so which are obtained uh, from the enrollment process and uh, during verification process the normalized hamming distance uh, then can be described uh, by this uh, equation here you can see uh, there are three different uh, parameters uh, for the reference uh, template as well as for the query template are used okay so here you can see that uh, pr uh, pr of i comma j represent the real part of the image okay and q uh, qr of i comma j represent the 
this, this PR and QR basically uh, represent the uh, the uh, reference template and query template. Okay, and PR here R represent the subscript R represent um, the real part of the features. Okay, and uh, I rep capital I represent uh, capital I. These subscripts represent the imaginary part of the features. Okay. And we are making a Boolean, uh, and we are applying a Boolean uh, operator between the reference template and query template. That means PR of i comma j uh, is uh, is compared with a Q, uh, QR uh, of i comma j. Okay. So uh, this is the real part. So we compare the real part, we compare the imaginary part, and we com also compare. Uh, we also compare the mask. Of the uh, mask of uh, um, uh, mask of the refer reference template and mask of the query template. That means, and we use the intersection. We uh, we use the end operator between these uh, two uh, masks, two different masks, which are obtained from we which are obtained from reference template and uh, query template. Okay, so uh, this mask can be represented by PM of i comma j. Which is uh, which is uh, compared with Q of uh, QM of I comma J. So these two uh, these two uh, these two quantity represent uh, the mask uh, which are obtained from the reference template and query template. Okay, and we apply the AND operator between these two masks. And it is it is also it is also uh, um, this resultant this resultant mask will also be compared with also be compared with the uh, with the real part uh, of the uh, features and uh, it is also compared with the imaginary part of the features okay and uh, when we obtain the hamming distance so this when we obtain the hamming distance this hamming distance is obtained between 0 and 1 okay so for the good matching, when there is a good matching, then uh, we will obtain the Hamming distance zero. Otherwise, we will obtain uh, for the worst matching, we will obtain the Hamming distance one. That means uh, the uh, the value which is close to zero is found to be a good matching or term as a good matching. Or when the uh, normalized Hamming distance will be found to be close to one, uh, that is to be termed as the worst matching or the bad matching. Okay. And here Boolean algebra, when you compare the when we compare the real part, uh, real part of the features which are obtained from the uh, which are obtained from uh, the reference template and the query template, then a Boolean uh, Boolean operator is used. This Boolean operator means when when this Boolean operator uh, will uh, give us the zero, that means any two uh, any two uh, bits uh, between these two sets of uh, two sets of uh, two sets of uh, features are found to be equal okay that means when the two bits will be found to be equal then this boolean uh, of this boolean function uh, of the corresponding boolean operator will give us zero okay and uh, after calculating the hamming distance uh, we uh, we we Calculate. We find the hamming distance between zero and one, and zero means the good match, and one means the worst match or bad match. Okay. So sometimes we found, uh, sometimes we found the hamming distance between zero and one. So it may be a 0.4, it may be 0 0.8, or it may be 0 0.9, it may be 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 is good uh, than 0 0.4. Uh, it is also good than 0 0.9. 0 0.4 is good than uh, 0 0.9. So that means. Uh, when the normalized having distance will be found to be close to zero, close to zero means it is the good match. So, so this that means two pump print image P and Q are uh, found to be equal. That means they are obtained. Now we can conclude that these two images are obtained from the same person. Otherwise, when it is been when the normalized having distance is found to be close to one, then uh, we can conclude that P and Q are obtained from two different persons. Okay, so they are not the same persons from which the uh, two pump print images are obtained now when we uh, in the in, in the last uh, two classes uh, when we discussed 
about uh, fingerprint verification and uh, today and uh, we when we discussing about uh, the pump print verification so we saw one term that is been used very frequently that is called the zero uh, that is called the uh, zero dc component now what is that what is zero dc component so uh, in case of uh, pump print images we also use the uh, zero dc component when we extract the texture features okay now uh, if we consider uh, if we consider the signal of the concept the signal means uh, signal means uh, signal is mathematically uh, can be represented by a function okay that function is called the xt so if uh, so here t is the time so signal is basically uh, represented by a function that is called xt and uh, in terms of uh, in terms of time okay so uh, when uh, we uh, when we say that a signal is a periodic so periodic means uh, periodic means that fun that uh, signal that signal uh, that signal repeats over and over uh, again that means that fun, that function that uh, here the function xt will be called the periodic function when this function or the corresponding signal will repeat over and over again okay so we can write xt equals to x of uh, t plus capital t here capital t is the period period of that function that means period of that signal corresponding signal okay now if we have uh, the well behaved uh, or we can say the uh, well defined uh, well defined periodic function like xt equals to a um, of sine of 2 pi ft plus phi then this function is corresponding to a sinusoidal function so sinusoidal function is nothing but a sine wave okay so sine wave is uh, sine wave can be represented by sine of t in terms of time okay but uh, since uh, there are different uh, sine waves that means the height of the sine waves may be different width of the sine wave may be different okay then uh, uh, we can have the different phases uh, for that uh, sine wave now if we consider one such sine wave then we can obtain uh, xt equals to a of uh, capital a of sine of uh, 2 pi ft plus phi so here capital a is the amplitude <coughs> or we can say this is the magnitude uh, magnitude of the signal here you can see uh, the uh, a, a is the basically the amplitude of the signal okay in the figure here you can see that uh, a is represented uh, by this uh, arrow okay and this uh, a represent the amplitude or the magnitude of the signal and uh, here f is the frequency and uh, here t is the time and phi is the phase okay so uh, we can write uh, capital t is the period so capital t equals to uh, 1 by f so here you can see that one by f is represented uh, represented uh, by the starting of the signal to end of the signal that means we can we can have we can have this uh, we can have a signal uh, over uh, over uh, so over the uh, over this axis which is represented by t and uh, we have we can also have the odd symmetry odd symmetry means so odd symmetry have some ends so starting of the signal above this line and uh, uh, we have uh, we have the another wave on the below uh, below of this line which is represented by t okay and below of this line uh, signal is called the odd symmetry so we do not consider the odd symmetry uh, in case of uh, in case of uh, calculating the zero dc component so in case of imaginary part of the features uh, uh, this odd due to this odd symmetry we can have the zero component of the now what is zero component if we consider two different but if we consider two different domain one is called the time domain and frequency domain then the, in time domain the signal is represented by time and frequency domain here and the signal is represented by uh, in terms of in terms of frequency and if we study the image uh, for two different domain one is called the special uh, special domain another is called the frequency domain okay that means whatever the image processing operation that we apply 
uh, and that we apply to manipulate the pixel values in the image so we can have two, we can have two representations one is called the spatial domain representation and another is called the frequency domain representation okay so in frequency domain representation if we uh, if we represent the same uh, signal which was represented in terms of time uh, can be represented uh, by also in terms of frequency that means when the signal is uh, represented in terms of frequency then uh, that frequency uh, domain that uh, that frequency uh, domain will be called uh, the uh, will be called the frequency domain representation and this frequency domain representation is uh, uh, referred by the stem uh, stem graphs stem uh, graphs yeah, you can see on the right hand side of the uh, right hand side of the figure uh, under frequency domain representation so these are this is called the stem graphs okay and in time domain here you can see the square shape uh, uh, square shape functions so here uh, in electrical engineering, we use the DC component as a direct current, but uh, sinusoid function basically uh, the altern so reverse of this uh, direct current that is called the alternative current. But uh, although we use this DC component in frequency domain also, okay. Uh, in case of uh, image signals, we can um, we use, we can use this uh, zero DC component and. Uh, here you can see the time domain representation 0.5 basically is the zero uh, zero dc component here the frequency is zero okay if we consider the cos of uh, 2 pi ft then here a if we uh, and uh, for f equals to zero when the frequency is zero we can have the uh, cos of 2 pi ft value is one okay and this one is nothing but the offset we can use this offset uh, in case of uh, in case of uh, image signals also in frequency domain okay so this is basically sir hello sir yes so we have class from 10 m you have class from 10 yes sir okay uh, so in the next class uh, we will continue the discussion and uh, in the next class uh, we will start a new topic after uh, completing this chapter okay or completing this topic okay that's all for today hello sir yes if you have any questions you can ask me now sir uh, i have one question but which is off syllabus yes uh, sir uh, I have a issue with a uh, message I already uh, sir, previously told. Uh, so, but I started receiving message now. Yes, in the in the I think in the last week uh, after the exam, I have added you in the mail list. Yes, sir. Uh, now you can you, now you can now you can receive uh, every mail from me. Whatever okay. the mails I will send uh, to you all, uh, you. You will also get that mail. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. And sir, I requested to you please accept my uh, class assessment to test, sir. Okay, I will accept your uh, test. There is no problem. But uh, uh, you need to be careful. Whenever uh, there is a, uh, there is no. Uh, whenever you will uh, receive no mails from me, then uh, you should inform me. Otherwise, how can I know that? Uh, you are not uh, receiving my mails and uh, the and the materials that uh, i am sending regularly okay sir i i next uh, careful for all you this. will inform me okay, okay whenever you will not receive any uh, receive any such mails then uh, you should inform me so that i can uh, add you again in the mail list okay sir okay okay okay, okay. any other questions no sir. no sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.